guys and welcome back to my channel oh my god i cannot believe i'm saying this this is like the first time in a long time that i have sat in front of the camera just to welcome y'all back to my channel i've been gone i know i know i know a lot has happened well quick breakdown of the things that have happened is that i have had a new baby i have a new baby now i have a son let's just run through it okay if you follow me on my instagram you know this already i'm just gonna put like a new family video clip over here so Say hello to me and my family. video actually to talk about the baby is birth story because you guys this story God just came through for us okay God really came through God showed up in ways that I could not imagine and I just want to thank God because when I had my daughter I documented most of that on my YouTube channel so if you want to check it out go look at my playlist titled pregnant with a spinal cord injury so of course you know, still on a wheelchair, still has spinal cord injury. Having my son this time around, it was kind of similar, but a little bit different because no matter what you know, every pregnancy is completely different. Every child is different. In my last video that I posted about this pregnancy, I was telling you guys about how some of my symptoms are very different from when I had my daughter. And the truth of the matter is, my son really gave me a run for my money, okay? I run for my money. I... <laughs> Good Lord, I threw up basically throughout the pregnancy. Let's just say that. I had nausea. And then when I wasn't throwing up, it was like trying to throw up. So that's one thing that was very, very different from my daughter. Another thing was I was just very fatigued. I didn't have a lot of energy and I was just basically like always tired, just tired for no reason. So that's kind of a look like a real run back to how the pregnancy treated me. But of course that was how I knew I was gonna have a boy because I'm like, you're acting different, so you better be a different gender. And that's really what I wanted. I told God what I wanted and God came through for that. I would've been okay with any gender, of course, because healthy baby, every, everything. But there's just something like special about when you ask God for something and it gives you exactly what you ask for. So shout out to you, my God, Father G. Thank you for giving us what we prayed for. And especially just the pregnancy in itself was a miracle because we were waiting for a while before I got pregnant. I talked about that in my last video that I posted on YouTube as well. So at that point, it was just like, God, please, please, please get me pregnant. And you know, if it's in your will, I would like a son. And God did it. And I'm sharing this part because so many times women have been made to feel guilty or like shamed for saying they want a specific gender because people act like having gender disappointment is not a thing and it is absolutely a thing if you want something and you don't get it no matter what even though you're grateful and you know that you're gonna love the baby you can still have gender disappointment i'm not gonna go into all of that in this video because i really just want to get to that but sorry part of this but i just want to give you guys like a background and just share and chat with you it's been a long time we chatted so that's what i'm doing anyway now let's fast forward to the birth of our baby boy it was all on february 16th okay backtrack i already knew that i was going to schedule an induction because that's what i did with my daughter and there was just no reason to test the water and see if something else was gonna shake it's like we had a daughter already we knew exactly what we did to bring her into this world and she came out and it was perfect and we're not gonna just like chance it now to seeing if my water is going to break on its own or something like that like we're not gonna do all that we're, we're just gonna we're not wanna wait okay we're just gonna go to the hospital kind of go with the same birth plan as much as possible that we can but also one thing about me i just know that i god is in control it's not in my power i surrender to the lord i tell the lord let your will be done but at the same time we kind of still plan with our medical professionals how things are supposed to go like I mentioned at the beginning, I have spinal cord injury, disabled, can't walk, can't, you know. But I was able to push our daughter out. So the plan was we're going to try doing that again this time. Try to push her out, you know, vaginally. And if that's not going through, next plan is get mommy and baby healthy. Baby out, mommy healthy, we're Gucci. Surgery, if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. But of course, I, with my prayers, told the Lord, I said, God, 
You know what's up, God. You you know what's up. Walking about me, I'm gonna pray. And I'm gonna talk to God like me and you. Nah, <laughs> like rest and beans, Lord. So I, I really thank God for my faith in Him. I thank God for answering prayers that we prayed. And even when things didn't go as we thought it would, God just always came through with a better plan. So, anyways, that's what we told my medical professionals. My doctor that delivered the baby, I literally only saw her once before she delivered my baby because we are with a medical team. The hospital I OBGYN people we live in California now, so it's not the same as like when I was in Texas. When I was in Texas, I just had one doctor that I saw throughout my pregnancy, and she came and she had my baby, and it was done. Over here, I saw different doctors throughout this whole pregnancy, so they told me it could be anybody delivering my baby. At first, I, that almost like made me scared and fearful and like stressed, but I just left it in God's hand. I was like, God. Whoever is gonna deliver this baby and bring the baby out healthy and fine and me, I'm gonna be fine. That's who you're gonna give to me. And you guys, I know I'm keep, I keep talking about prayers, but prayers work, okay? So if you're not about prayers, you probably don't wanna be on my channel. Just just exit, just be going, okay, be going. But uh, what ended up happening was a few weeks leading up to the delivery date, you know, my due date was February 20, but 39 weeks and upward was what I was aiming for because that was when we had the same thing with my daughter. Again, I can bring my daughter in because if he don't, if it ain't broke, you ain't gonna fix it. Like you work with her, it's gonna work for him in Jesus' name. That's how I that's how I hide it, okay? But I was also very flexible. Like if things wasn't going as planned, then of course we're gonna peel it. Peel it. The doctors a few weeks before the baby's due date, which was gonna be February 20th, they were like, hey, 39 weeks if you wanna go ahead and Pick a date here and here, we can do it. But guess what? I was waiting for grandma to get here, my husband's mama. I said, pause. Until grandma arrives, had nothing shaking around here. So <laughs> we were waiting for grandma to get here to America. She was coming from Nigeria. If you guys don't know my mother's, my husband's mother, she was here. If you guys don't know my husband's mother, she was here with us when we had Zuri. I think our when Zuri was eight months after my big mommy, you know, left, which big mommy made her so rest in peace in Jesus' name. A lot of you know her, y'all know she was my rock. When I had my daughter, she was here with me for the birth and postpartum and like she stayed with us up till eight months before she had to go back and then my mother-in-law, my wonderful mother-in-law, my husband's mom came to then be with us. So this time around, I mean, the plan already was going to be that my mother-in-law would be here for our second child even before my big mommy died. And that is just crazy. Don't wanna get too emotional right now. And then of course, my big mommy, may her so rest in peace, passed away. We got pregnant and it's like, we, we my husband and I already knew his mom was gonna come because that was how we had it planned. Like my mom, which was big mommy, she's my aunt, of course, I've told you guys about the story, was gonna come for our first child, and then his mom was gonna come for our second child. That was gonna be the plan regardless of the situation. Anyway, we stuck to the plan, so his mom hadn't gotten here yet, and the doctors were talking about some pick a induction date. I said, y'all ain't gonna make me pick nothing. I'm waiting for somebody, and she, until she gets here, cause I need her in the, in the, in the delivery room with me, until she gets here, y'all ain't gonna, I ain't picking no date, period. Anyway, we had like some tentative dates with them. God be good. My husband's mom got here good time around when baby was like 38 weeks and some days. I called my doctor, I talked to her. I was like, mom, you ready for this baby come out? I told her what was gonna happen. She's like, hey, I'm ready when you are. So I called my doctors. I was like, okay, here's a date that we're gonna pick within like two days or whatever days. We go there that morning. And that date that we ended up picking was February 16th. So what happened was, I and my husband and my mother-in-law, we went to the hospital that morning, literally, oh my God. I'm gonna put some clips here so that you guys can see. Um, went to the hospital, got checked into a room. They're like, this is where you're gonna have your baby. Uh, clearly, I'm here for an induction, so we're gonna get things started. The first thing first, they put me on the bed, put the monitor on the baby, did all of that setup that they typically do. And then they called the anesthesiologist, got me introduced ask me questions, why I have questions. I'm like, don't worry, I've been through this before. We're doing the same thing, epidural in my back because we have to get that epidural going before anything gets started because my body does not interpret pain like a regular person's body because I have spinal cord injury. So my body is gonna be interpreting pain differently so we need to get epidural started. That way it blocks every kind of pain and I don't have what is known as autonomic dysreflexia. I know, we're in biology class now. This is when my body starts interpreting pain so that I know that things are happening and it can give me a headache, high blood pressure, or something else that I'm not even anticipating. So, 
get the epidural started. That way, I don't gotta deal with none of this stuff when it comes to play, okay? So we got the epidural started. Then they started talking about pitocin, induction. My water hadn't broken yet. They got started on all the stuff that they needed to get started on. Put a Foley catheter in me because, you know, we gotta get pee going. So they got all this stuff started. And of course, me, I was in the room. Grandma was in the room. My husband was in the room. We started praying. We started putting everything in God's hands. Like, God, we leave this in your hand. Baby's gonna come out healthy. Mommy's gonna be fine. Uh, at this point, I think I couldn't eat anymore. So I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> and then I hit before they started all the other things but like I couldn't eat anymore and so pretty much I was just on my phone on Instagram I was actually posting on Instagram like hey can you guys guess the gender of the baby I think it was like the day of delivery that I actually posted what do you think I'm going to have because I hadn't shared the baby's gender on Instagram yet if you follow me on Instagram y'all know all of this already but uh so I was like posting as regular just waiting for things to speed up and guess what Things did not speed up. Baby was not dilating, contraction was not contracting, water was not breaking, and so they had to come and help me. They came in, they broke the water, the things started going, dilation was not centimetering. I'm sitting there like, fam, time is moving. Baby, what's up? So, I remembered that in Texas, the nurse that I had put this peanut ball in between my legs to help whatever the peanut ball did. So I told them, y'all got peanut ball? We gotta get all that stuff going. So we started doing the peanut ball, the side to side. We're doing all the things that we're doing. We're praying. Grandma is holding me, praying, asking me, am I good? My husband's here checking on me, making sure my blood pressure was not going up because that happened when we had my daughter. My blood pressure was going up, okay? Up and up. And that meant that I was in pain. And I was also cold. I carried my own blanket, my own pillow because these things make me very comfortable. If you're having a baby, if you think your own pillow is gonna make you feel better, take it with you. Just take it with you. Your own blanket is gonna make you feel better. Just take it with you, okay? Anyways, I'm resting, I'm sleeping, I'm sipping water, I'm waiting, dilation. Things are not progressing. My leg is up, my leg is down. Things are not progressing. Suddenly, I started shivering on one side and I'm hot on the other side. And I'm sweating on one side and I'm shivering on one side. So I'm under the blanket and I'm over the blanket. And my husband's like, what's going on? What's happening? And I'm like, nothing, you know, nothing. And this man looked at me like, this looks like autonomic dysplasia. So they quickly called the anesthesiologist to come in. Increase something because that means I'm feeling pain, but my body doesn't know that it's pain because again, I feel pressure I know that I'm uncomfortable, but I mean haspa, we are here to have babies So whatever it takes for my baby, I will survive. I will suffer through it. You know <laughs> It is well. My husband's like nah, -uh, give her some pain medicine ASAP. Tap the epidural. Do whatever y'all gotta do She needs to stop shaking and shivering and sweating. Thank God for a good support system. Thank God for a good husband He just knows okay, and because of that they gave me more epidural or more pain medicine and after that guess what this started progressing so well like centimeter was centimetering they broke my water the water was gushing out contraction was contracting but it was like irregular and somehow after i just got the extra dose of like epidural or pain medicine i don't know what they gave me but after that things just started progressing well we're praying we're singing we're telling god hallelujah and then it was time for my nurse that was so awesome i don't remember her name oh my god i'm terrible she was wonderful. And then she goes, it's time for her to leave. I said, leave, you've been so good. You have to be here for the baby. This was around like seven o'clock that she has to check out. She has to go do her notes and she has to leave. And then they were calling my doctor and telling my doctor that, okay, uh, I've dilated enough and it's time to start. And so now I started like feeling anxious. Cause I'm like, this lady cannot leave. God, you are gonna have everybody in this room that is good, that knows what they're doing. She's been knowing what she's doing. Where are you going, Lord? Where is she going, Lord? And like, I just, in my head, I didn't want to get so anxious, but it was inevitable, like you go after me. So I had to tell God, like, God, please make everything work out. And she came back and she goes, I have good news and I have bad news. I'm like, what's going on? And she goes, the good news is that I'm gonna stay for your delivery. It's like, okay, bad news. She's like, there's no bad news. And I was like, oh my God. And that just lifted my mood. And I don't know why this is important in my story, but the way my mood was lifted when she told us that she was staying, I feel like that's, very vital to my birth story because the fact that she was saying she knew what she was doing she was so good she was so nice and then the doctor came in and then they started trying to have me push because um at this point now it was time to push right so we're positioned we're trying to get everything going and it's like every time i bear down this is what i do because once again spinal cord injury 
wheelchair disability so the way i push the baby is by doing crunches okay so i'm laying down and then i'm like doing crunches like mm, i'm gonna put a clip here if i find something so i'm doing all of that and it's like not working and then what they ended up having to do right because my legs were open like this just think of this part as my knee right so my legs were open like this to get the baby to come out and then the nurse was like oh there was like a baby we delivered last week what we had to do was when the mom push we push their knee in together and that way it makes the pelvic come out like this something something do you want to try it, doctor doctor was like okay sure thank god for my nurse so hmm. that's how she told them to do that thing and that thing as i was pushing the baby started coming down i said god almighty how wonderful are you, Lord? How wonderful is your name? So basically, they knock your knees together during pushing, and it helps to open up your pelvic more, and then the baby kind of eases its way out. Now, here's where it gets another tricky. So they're doing that. It starts working. Baby's coming out, but guess what? The moment the baby's head reach the birth canal, he sucks himself right back in. My doctor said, oh, um, this has happened enough times and then they're all looking at the monitor and then they're looking at me and i'm looking at people's faces and everybody's face is like looking crazy so i'm like what's going on at this point they're like baby's art b this has happened long enough we need baby to just come out i was like ha and then they were like can we use um suction whatever that thing is called to pull him out over his head and in my head i'm like you want to vacuum my child you want to have a cone head what's going on and then they were like, no, 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 things are so different now. Uh, the way we do it is just a light tap on his head. And so when he comes out, instead of him sucking himself right back in, we just use that to guide him out. It's not pulling anything. It's going to be fine. His brain is going to be fine. And then I just like really quickly, like, Lord, what do you think? And I said, God, you know what? You've handled this from the beginning. Let's go. If that's what it takes, let's go. So I get them to go ahead. And my doctor, God bless her. God bless her soul. Oh my God. She was so quick. Grandma was right there. Like at my bottom looking at everything okay she was making sure her baby was all right me and the baby i'm her baby okay she was making sure we're both all right and she was there she was looking at them praying of course i'm sure in the spirit and the doctor shout out to you god one more push from me and the doctor put the thing on the baby's head and like just grabbed him out and our son came out and i was just like oh my god thank you god thank you god i'm gonna put that clip right here because we really didn't vlog. My husband was just like getting a little bit of clip here and there. I was tired this pregnancy, okay? So vlogging wasn't really my thing, but he knew that I would want certain clips. So he was able to like, just take certain clips throughout the birthday. And that's why I don't really have a birth vlog vlog. But at least this story and this clips, I hope it kind of showed you guys like what the day was like. And thanks to God, our son was born perfect. So beautiful i cried and after crying i'm like wait i can't breathe i can't breathe and everybody was like yes you can just breathe i don't know right after he came out and they like took him away i felt like i couldn't breathe but they're like your vitals are fine you're breathing fine just breathe and so that was like another thing that happened and god literally saved me from that so praise god his head shaped looked beautiful he came out with a lot of hair he was so beautiful it reminded me of my daughter so much i'm like did i have the same baby two times they cleaned him up and then but like when i moving to the other room that you go to after you have your child but in that room you can only have one person with you and i was like huh one person i have husband i have grandma like they both coming with me i don't know what you're about <laughs> they come with me <laughs> what's your mouth <laughs> anyway uh they were like okay we'll make an exception for you i was like you better because no offense to the policy but i need my peoples here we go to our room we're all enamored we're calling family telling people babies here everybody's happy of course joyful in that moment i really really wish i could call my big mommy as well i just had to Oh, Lord God, it is a whole nother video talking about grief and I think that's one of the reasons I haven't been on YouTube too because I know you guys are such like lovers of her and I don't want to like keep, I don't know, it's just been very difficult for me to 
come back on YouTube. Somehow YouTube feels more like a space that if I do something, people are gonna ask me too much. And then it's like once you start talking, you can't stop <laughs> on YouTube. And I think that's one of the things that I've been like holding myself back from. But anyway, uh, I'm in a good space. Everything happens for a reason. I know she touched the world and impacted so many lives when she was here in this world and i know that our legacy continues to live on through me through her children through everybody that she left in this world to everybody that she's impacted so uh god knows what's up in that area and i continue to heal from this because honestly speaking i don't wish this on anybody but it sucks losing it sucks it sucks but yeah, birth story, uh, I think that's all about it. I had people ask questions and stuff, but I hope your questions were kind of answered inside of all of this. I will do more videos surrounding postpartum breastfeeding and just how life has been. But so far, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. Give me a thumbs up. What do people do on YouTube again? I don't even remember. Subscribe if you're not. Thank you for watching. Let me know what kind of content you want to see. I am a mom of two now, a whole two. Zuri and Zuma. By the way, his name is Zuma, her son. Zuma means peace. If you follow me on Instagram, this is not news to you. But if you don't, then all of this is news to you. So that's on you. You you need to follow me on Instagram. Period. Bye. <laughs>